The Skillman Foundation is really interested in blight because we believe that it is an impediment to neighborhood revitalization, and it is a critical factor to the lack of safety that children face every day as they walk to and from school. Nobody had any idea how much blight there was in Detroit. You hear numbers from 60,000 to 80,000 to 100,000 blighted properties. No one quite understood um, you know, what, what the actual amount was. Property is a gateway to the property taxes that fund or don't fund city services. Um, unpaid property taxes lead to tax foreclosure, which lead to vacant houses, which lead to blight, which lead to arsons, which lead to all these terrible things that dot the landscape of the city. What we wanted to do was pilot um, a small innovation in one neighborhood and see if that innovation would have legs and it would have power. It really started at a coffee shop. Uh, we went and sat down with uh, Data Driven Detroit and Loveland, and I said that I needed the two of them to work together uh, in order to do a parcel survey in Brightmore and ask them to come back with a joint proposal of what that would look like. Um, and two weeks later, they had that proposal in front of me uh, to basically do, you know, incorporate neighborhood residents in parcel surveying Brightmore. And Chris Ewell over at Skillman has been fantastic. Of all the, the actors and parties from foundations and potential funders for these projects, he's one of the quickest to get the impact of things and one of the quickest to really help put the resources together. We initially used grant capital uh, to help them in, in effect do research and development. As we were doing the work in Brightmore, trying to figure out how to take down houses and also trying to figure out how to map and create this system, um, this is when the, the White House formed the Blight Task Force that was chaired by Dan Gilbert and two co-chairs um, and injected $150 million into the blight removal efforts within the city. So we are surveying every property in the city of Detroit, um, everything including residential, commercial, industrial, and vacant land. Um, at the same time as doing this massive survey, Data Driven Detroit is also assembling 14 different administrative data sets from multiple sources, city, county, state, and federal sources, uh, and combining all of those and making these things talk to one another. The technology we built for the survey is an app called Blexting, um, short for Blight Texting. Surveyors come in the morning, they check out a Google Nexus 7 tablet, they open up the app and they see a map of the city with where they are and tap the property they're standing next to. It opens up the camera, they take a picture of the property they're looking at and then it asks them a series of questions about that property. Is there a structure here or is it a lot? And then depending on which one they pick, it forks and it asks them more questions. And as soon as they press um, send on that, that immediately goes back to the Mission Control Lab where we're at, where we watch all that come in in real time. We actually wouldn't have been able to do this current project without having tested the waters a little bit um, on that first smaller neighborhood. So we piloted basically the entire program that we're using here and now. Our second investment came being a part of the Blight Task Force. There was, for this Motor City mapping project, there was a dollar cost for it. Us and our other partners on the task force funded that. So using this data that we gleaned from the parcel survey, we'll be able to actually stage the citywide blight removal, starting in geographic zones and be able to phase it over the course of the next three years or five years or whatever it may be. I think that we have to take down the blight because we can see from our experiences uh, in Brightmore alone that when you t do something as simple as remove the blight, remove the trash out of a community, how it restores hope, how it uh, just generates this positivity and this audacity that neighborhoods actually can make a difference and that they can come back. And I think Brightmore is a great example. I'm starting to call Brightmore the little neighborhood that could. Within the Brightmore pilot area that we've done, the blight removal, where we removed now almost 300,000 pounds of, of waste, we are changing felt safety. We've actually, though, seen a down, downturn in the actual crime in that area. We quite literally have folks from all over the country calling Loveland and calling Data Driven Detroit and trying to figure out how they can do this similar process nationwide. We now have the opportunity to make an investment into the company to help them with that growth. Detroiters are fighters and they're resilient. And I think whenever you count them down, they always pop back up, right? And so I think about that oftentimes, that when we say that Detroiters can't do something, that's usually when they do. And so I think that as people around the world say to us that the blight problem is too big or Detroit can't come back because of its economic issues, I think that just fuels our fire uh, to make a difference and to prove them wrong. And it doesn't matter how we get to the positive solution as long as we get there 
And I think that blight is one of the first steps in doing so.